Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, here with another five minute portrait, but this time we're also putting in there a real world review of the Nikon D5500 with the 18 to 140 kit lens. Now, when we were setting up to decide on what the next five minute portrait was, Steven and Todd were like, hey, why don't you go ahead and try to shoot with something you've never shot with before? In this case, I've never shot with the D5500 and it just came out, so we figured it's a good time to do a five minute portrait and real world review all mixed into one. So we are here at Pizzeria Bedia, as Joe likes to say. Well, actually people call it Pizzeria Bedia, but his name is really, Joe, what's your name? Uh, Bedia. Exactly, it's Bedia. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna do the five minute portrait. I've never used this camera before and I'm gonna talk about quick tips as I go through, things that I like, things that I don't like, but really my focus here is to try to get Joe making pizza. Well, he's not making the pizza, he's getting ready the ingredients to make the pizza later on today. But if you ever come to Philly, you gotta find this place. By the way, there's no phone number, so you have to walk up. It's like a game. You gotta reserve your dough when you get here. It's a good thing. And uh, I'm ready to go. You ready to go, Joe? I'm ready. All right, so for, for me, I've gotta figure out my settings in this situation. I've never shot in here before. I've never used this camera before. And things I have to watch out for is this is a variable aperture lens. So that means at 18, it's 3.5. And at 140, it goes to 5.6. That means I'm losing light as it as I zoom out. So because I'm losing light as I zoom out, I've gotta ride the shutter speed down. Because if I'm losing a stop and a half, I then have to gain that stop and a half back somewhere, either by raising my ISO or lowering my shutter speed. So that also means I have to prepare at a higher ISO to begin with, knowing that when I zoom, that when I pump down my shutter speed, I'm leaving myself enough room to basically hand hold it out at 140. So here we go. This thing has a touch screen, which is new, and I actually like you hit the info button and then back here I can select the ISO that I want and just touch it. It actually is very, very good. So let's just, let's just snap off some photos. See, I don't have his, his, his arm is blocking his face, so I don't want it, there we go. Oh, you're fine, you're fine, just do your thing. So I, oh boy, I got my settings pretty much good right off the bat. But the reason I didn't take this picture, and I'll show you guys right now, is that his arm is in the way, and I waited, but I only took it for you right here because I just wanna show you what to look for. So you can mentally see that, well, if I'm on a shoot, I don't need to shoot that picture, but there, ooh, there we go. Uh, nope. Uh, you can hear the focus beep. I'm actually gonna switch over to, uh, single, no, I wanna be in continuous, so I have to find where continuous is in this camera. Go like this, here it is, AFS right there, hit that, I hit continuous, and I'm good to go continuously. So that's good. Joe, I may tell you to hold something every once in a while, just like hold, don't move, and that way it, uh, it gives me a chance to lock it in. Yeah, I like the eyes looking in there. Lock in the flavor. What is it, locking in the flavor? All right, that's good for this guy. Uh, so the only, my only concern is making sure that everything is sharp. I, I've never used this 140 lens. Uh, I also have the VR on on it, so I'm, I'm just trying to give myself enough shutter speed to get it working right, so. All right. I also have to be concerned about the, the backlight over here. So it definitely takes a lot more work Ooh, there's dough. Just double check, because I just rode my ISO up higher. So I need to bring it back down, because we came back over to this area. I'm gonna flip this over. Oh, uh, let's see. Before you do that, let me, uh, let me just make sure I got my settings set up. Pretty good. All right, give me one where you're just looking at me. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Any little thing up there. That is the GoPro. Oh. So what I'm doing is trying not to make sure I don't cut off your hands when I do this. All right, go ahead whenever, whatever you're doing. So it's like gonna be one big pizza. Yeah. 
This is 35 pizzas. That's 35? Yeah. See, ideally, I'd like to get a little wider, but being that the, this 18 acts as a 27 millimeter, it's not too tight, but I would love to have like a 14 to 24 on in here, but I'm using what we have to use. So this is pretty cool. And I also see the hand, so I may move to a different angle here and switch sides. I'm gonna come over to here. Yeah, we got nice light on his face and I don't wanna burn myself on the oven. Oh, but it's so warm. So now my focus is moving down to here. Let's just double check. And I do like to double check my shots. I don't have any problem taking a look to make sure I'm on the right path, but once I get it locked into the right path, I wanna make sure that, you know, I'm good to go and I keep shooting. Yeah, getting the hands, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. So this is a little challenging back here because it is, it is much smaller, but that's part of a photo shoot. So I know that it's gonna end up on the scale at some point, so I might as well get ready to shoot that. Yeah, good. Oh, hey, I found a new angle. Oh, really good, I like that angle. Let me just double check. So one thing I noticed real quick is I'm trying not to overcompensate for when I'm zooming out. When I go to 140, the aperture goes to 5.6, but I know that I am shooting raw, and hopefully by the time this comes out, I have the ability to go ahead and uh, edit those raw files, but I'm knowing in my mind that I, I have a good leeway to edit those later. So that one stop off or a little less than that, if I'm pretty close, then the raw file is gonna definitely help me in. Uh, in post-processing to get the shot that I really want. Oh, hey now, that was nice. Let's see. Oh, I missed it. So what is the exact weight you're looking for there? I'm looking for about a pound. And there's a pound in each pie. Yeah. Do you lose any when it cooks? Does it? Uh, I mean, it probably still wouldn't weigh a pound because the you know water sort of evaporates. Right. Bump my ISO a little bit. Actually, drop my shutter speed. So when can I get you just cutting just a little bit? Just to, I just want to see yeah. just it in there so I can get it. All right, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. One more, one more. All right, go ahead. So it's all right on shoots like this, or in my, in my opinion, it's still a candid shoot, but it's still good to direct a little bit. Say, you know, hold that right there or give me that shot, because then you at least know that you can get it. I mean, th there's nothing wrong with asking for that. It's not completely unheard of to say, hey, hold that there, hold that there. So now my goal, being that I see a bunch of different dough balls out here, I'm gonna try and focus in on one of them and get the other ones out of focus, just to, just to add some dimension to it. So that means I'm gonna zoom out to 140, which means my aperture is gonna to go to 5.6, and to compensate for that, I'm gonna drop my shutter speed just a little bit. Okay, let me double check. All right, I was pretty good at getting that. And I also like getting his hands in there too. There we go. Now this does have one of those reverse flip out screeny McScreener thing things here. I'm not a big fan of doing this, but for, for test purposes, let's just see how it works out. So now that I went back to fully wide, I gotta bump my shutter speed back up to compensate for it. <laughs> I tried rotating the screen to rotate the camera. I have to actually use my hand to rotate. But I still wanna get my angles straight. Oh, I can rotate that even more. And I can touch to focus too. Okay. So, 
When I first got my hands on this camera at a photo show, I didn't like the option of being able to touch the, the, the screen for it to take a picture. Now I actually see it has a place. So I just touched the screen to turn that on because I can stabilize with this hand. Oh wait, no I can't. Oh, maybe I'm wrong because now I can't touch it to focus. Oh yes I can. Oh, but I don't know how much I actually like that. So I'm gonna turn that off and go back to the other way. At least it was a good idea. Like Bedia. Okay. So I guess that's where the flippy screen comes in handy when you can do something like that. Now I need to review it and make sure everything was good. Nope, I don't like it that much. I like being able to look through the camera when I'm shooting that's a little difficult, so maybe I'll try something a little later on that will be different. All right, now I need to turn the live view back off. Whoa, look at all the dough balls. Yeah, this is, oh, this is a good angle. I'll just get this right because I have an idea. Bump my shutter speed just a little bit. I'm looking for the eyes and the hands and all of it coming into one area, making sure I don't cut anything off. Hold that, Joe, hold that there. There you go, you're good, thank you. See, that was just, I just, he came into the frame that I wanted. So my focus here is to try and capture the wide shots, the medium shots, the tight shots. So I have the details of the hands cutting the dough. I have a portrait type thing. I mean, these are just all the things that go through my mind when I'm shooting. And I talked about it in the pre-visualization video, which we can pop up on the screen at some point, where I talked about preparing for this shoot the night before. Which pizza's mine later? That one? So. Can you tell me a little bit about the ingredients you use and why you, because I know that they're, they're, well, without going and giving away trade secrets. No, I mean, there's, uh, this is pretty, pretty simple dough. Um, there's, uh, I use a really nice organic flour. Um, that was sort of just important to me. Uh, it's a, it's a great flour first and foremost, and then secondly, it's organic. Um, what makes it organic flour? Uh, just the way that it's that it's uh, grown. Um, it's actually a really great company. They use uh, it's a it's a fully uh, sort of uh, wind powered uh, company. They're out in Utah, Central Milling. So to you, the the ingredients are really important to making a good pizza. Yeah, I mean it's it's like uh, it's probably. Maybe, I don't even know, but maybe it's similar to taking pictures if you had a great camera. It might like do, you know, a lot of the work for you. Where if you use really good ingredients, you know, there, you're, it, would be, it would be hard to sort of, you, you can sort of let them speak for themselves, you know, because they're already great. So it's less, um, less like sort of manipulation. It's just, it is sort of what it is. If the tomatoes are good, they're gonna taste like good tomatoes. I mean, there's, there's no like way around that. It's complicated anything. Nope. Now I'm just lining up, getting ready for him to cut. Gonna try to guess where he's gonna do that from. That everything is locked in. Oh yeah, this, the exposure is right. Nope, I guessed wrong. All right, <laughs> hold that right there, right there, right there. Like you were gonna cut it real quick. Hold on. Yeah, just hold the hold the uh, the cutting right there. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. So I should probably try to live somewhere else here too. So one of the things that's difficult with this, this camera is we have such a small viewfinder. It's hard to get my eye up in there. That's why I'm not, well, I don't wear glasses when I shoot to begin with, but it's more difficult to get your face up in there. And you know, I don't like to crop, so I wanna get the composition as right as possible in the camera. And it's kind of being difficult with a screen like this, or sorry, with a viewfinder like that. So I've lived in that corner for a while. I'm gonna try and start looking for other shots to make this interesting. Ooh, I like this. Mm, yeah. 
This is just giving me a different look on things. Because sometimes you just have to, you just have to move away from, from where you're at to find different angles. So I have the pizza oven here that I'm gonna try to get out of focus, but the light, the window light coming in is really nice. Hold that right there, Joe. One more. Look at me real quick. Keep your head down a little bit, and then eyes to me. So I'm just guessing that I'm gonna drop my, oh, that's good. That's cool. I just had to, you know, I saw that the shadow showed up in his face, and so I, I thought in my mind that the, the light's not hitting his face as well, so I had to quickly drop my shutter speed. Now, I missed it that time, but now I'm gonna be more prepared for it next time. But I thought in my head that, oh, there's shadow in the face, and it's not getting hit by the window light. I have to do something. So that's the stuff that goes through your mind during these shoots, or any shoot in general. Plus, it's out of 5.3. Oh, look, he's doing something else. So, yeah, I'm sort of, there's only like a couple. No, I like it. Hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that. So now he's even further away from the window. Let me go vertical real quick. That's good. I like the eyes, Joe. One more. And hopefully I dropped the shutter speed properly to get it. So I did. Pretty close. So a lot of it is just feeling it. It's not exactly super important. Now don't take this the wrong way. I'm not saying that you wanna get the exposure not right in the camera, but you wanna be pretty darn close and a lot of it becomes the feel, that I feel that I need to drop my shutter speed because he backed away from the window. That means it gets less bright as he backs away, so I basically had to guess, shut my shutter speed, uh, drop my shutter speed down. But I knew, I just did it by feel, two clicks. You know that three clicks generally is one stop, so it's just all this math is going on in my head. And I never finished Algebra 2 in school, by the way. So I'm, I, I'm actually pretty happy with the focus so far, at least based on this, well, it's a 3.2 inch screen, so it's pretty good. I'm happy with it. So Joe, you always wear the Phillies hat. Is that part of the uh, the equation? I also have a Sixers hat. But it's always... Uh, 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 you know, a friend of mine got me uh, this old Sixers hat at an, at an uh, like a auction in Lancaster County. Yeah. I'm originally from Lancaster and the, at the time, I was wearing the hat, and the owner of Mitchell and Ness. Oh, really? Uh, saw it. He was a regular of mine, and he said, "He said, you know, in Japan, they'd give you like eight hundred or a thousand for that hat." And I was like, "Oh, really?" So then I started doing research on it, and I and I found on eBay in Texas a Phillies hat, because the Sixers hat's from '76 or '77, and this is like '78 or or late '70s anyway and uh, I found it for pretty cheap. So I figure I have to sort of wear a hat to keep, you know, like hair out of the food. Yeah, oh man. Do it with uh, a uh, something, you know, interesting. Yeah. And I also see you have some of the old, like uh, Charles Barkley uh, yeah. starting lineups around. I'm not really, I'm not really that much of a sports guy, but uh, I now because of the hat and, and the uh, bobbleheads and stuff, people, sort of associate the sports with me, but um, I get a lot of people coming in and talking like heavy sports talk and like, what, how are they gonna do this season and all stuff? I'm like, dude, I don't know. I don't know. I sort of grew up with that stuff, but I don't really follow it anymore. That beeping that you guys hear is my nose touching the touch screen, but actually I don't think it's changing anything, but I don't know why. I mean, yes, I have a big nose or something, but it, it, I don't under, I don't understand what it does, why it's doing that. So here's another mental note to make. Um, I saw that he was putting the dough balls into a tray and the tray is white. The balls are also white. So that means that I'm going from shooting sort of a darker subject to now shooting a brighter subject and I knew that I needed to bump up my shutter speed to compensate for that. A lot of this is quick action. I'm not really riding the ISO so much because 
I'm sure the camera can handle a higher ISO. It, it's perfectly fine. Most cameras today are, but I want to, the, the quickest thing that I can change in this camera is the shutter speed. Because if I want to change the aperture, I've got to hold down the plus minus button because there's no dedicated aperture wheel to change. So I'm riding the shutter speed. Uh, it's just, it's just what you have to do when you have a camera like this is you have to think about what you have to ride in order to get the shot that you need. So I know he's gonna be placing it in the back left corner, so I'm gonna focus here on the one on the right because it should be on the same plane. And then if he uses his right hand to put it in there, it should look, look better. Oh yeah. Well, I'm just trying to think because if the left arm comes out, then it means that that's gonna block my uh, shot. So that was subliminal messages to my subject. I'm left-handed too. Boom, boom. Very nice. Cool. I also thought about going outside to get shots too, but I don't know that I, I'm gonna. I've had some great pictures from out there. Well then maybe I'm just gonna have to go out there. Because you get um, the reflection. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, mean, I just love the light on your face, right? Pretty here. open shot too. Look right here. I'm gonna go one more. And every time I say one more, it means I'm probably gonna do like two more. <laughs> no, you're good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly run outside in the cold without my shirt on. I mean, my shirt's gonna be on. Uh, you guys should be able to see me through the window, right? So this is where a circular polarizer would come into play. I have my reflection into this window. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to shoot through it because it's so much darker in there. If I had uh, a circular polarizer, I'd be able to bring that down. Because right now, all I have is the reflection of me and I don't like it. So I'm, Todd, we're just gonna have to go back in. It's just not gonna work. Sometimes shots don't work. But now that I walked right into the room, holy God, I got a cool picture shot right here. Also, one thing, hold that, Joe. Oh, that's good too. Actually, let me double check, because I really like this. Look right here. Keep looking, keep looking. All right, you can go back to that. Uh, one thing I just noticed is there's a fire extinguisher in the background, and I had the fire extinguisher in, in the shot right here, but then what I did is I used Joe's body, I took one step to the left, and it's mostly out of there. And I like this, see, I like this wide shot. Oh, this is great. And he's pretty much in the middle, so I'm gonna step to the side, I'm not gonna worry about the fire extinguisher, but this is really awesome. Yeah, a lot of this is, is just, I'm glad I walked outside and it didn't work. It, it didn't work for me outside, but then I walked in the door and I was like, there's a shot. And the reason it didn't work outside, so, so you understand, well, there's a lot of glare. And in order to get rid of that glare, if I had a, a circular polarizer, I would have been able to put it onto the front of the lens and then I would rotate that and basically a circular polarizer will cut through the glare. That's what it would do, cut through the window. But I like this because we have all of Joe's stuff on the counter here setting us up. It just draws us into the shot. And as I zoom in, I'm gonna drop my shutter speed slightly. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's good too, because we got the lighting from out of the window. Oh, that's beautiful. Hold that, yeah, keep looking. So now I saw that he did something. He was looking down, the eyes were looking down as he was, oh, that's great. Oh, look at the light on his eyes. So nice. Oh, and then, then, then me saying that, look, he's, he's smiling. Okay, and he leaned closer. Now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna actually switch into, um, I gotta touch this. Instead of being a continuous, go back to single, because I wanna lock it in. I'm looking for a specific shot right here. Let's see if I can get it. 
huh. And again, every time I go from 140 back to 18, it's going from 5.6 to 3.5, which means I have to take my shutter speed and bump it back up to compensate for more light coming in. And that's just, being that I, I don't use, personally use variable aperture lenses, there's more math that has to go on in your mind when you're doing that. So now I'm starting to become more aware of it with that I'm like, oh, I just went from 140 to 18. I better bump my shutter speed back up. Oh, that's great. No, I'm missing stuff. So I want to get an ultra, I want to get a wide shot. So I just want to, I would, yeah, I just want to try and get a shot that's almost the full store. And I, I've got, um, I, I'm gonna move, you see this? The shovel's here because we have snow, but I'm gonna actually put it down a little lower on the ground here so that it doesn't get into my shot because it was, it was, I was catching it in the side of my eye. Oh, this is good. And to quickly get that focus point back to the middle, I just hit the center button of the camera and that way, you know, cause it was in the wrong place, but the center button allowed me to, to put it back in the middle so I knew where it was gonna be. Now, another thing I wanna do here is I wanna get the board in there so you can see the types of pizza that are being made. I'm just finding the right proper angle here. I've got the board in there. Now it's hard to see in the viewfinder, but I love this. Joe's right in the middle. This is good. I'm feeling it. I'm also, now it's not as tight, but I'm gonna get a little tighter too, because at 18, you get a little bit of bowing. And now I'm at, what, 50? And, I, and you can see how the light is getting lost even more. Oh look, Joe's doing that. Hey, hey Joe. That's good. Now I'm gonna come in closer, because I like this. I wanna get a portrait. Now I know I'm gonna, oh, that's good, that's good. Now there's an exit sign in the back, so I'm stepping this way. That's good. That's really good. I wanna try and get that again. There we go, hopefully we get some motion movement in there. It may not happen at 500th of a second, but yeah. So sometimes you want to get motion um, in order for me, to, I have to think about this, and if, to get him going like this on there, to get the hand moving but his face still, I'm going to have to lower the ISO so that I can then lower my shutter speed to get it slow enough. Being that I have the VR here, I'll be able to stabilize Joe and keep him still, but the hand should blur. So that's a little bit of a challenge that I'm thinking of right here. So I'm gonna go, I'm at 1600 ISO. I wanna drop it to say 1600 to 800 is one stop and two stops would take it to 400. So let's go to 400 ISO and being I'm at 1 500th of a second, two stops less. One stop less is 2 50th and then another stop is 1 25th. So let's see, I'm gonna take my shutter speed down to one 125th, and I'm gonna see if I can get that to work. All right, hold it, hold it, go ahead. Boom, and I timed it into such a point, okay, 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 that worked. It worked, Joe is frozen, and you got the hand coming down a little bit. Now this is gonna take a little bit of work to get better, but the thinking behind it was right. So as a quick tip, if you wanna to try to get some motion into the shot, uh, you gotta slow your shutter speed down, which means you have to drop your ISO, which means then it's also a good idea to put VR on if you have that capability. So Joe would be frozen, and as the hand is coming down on top of the dough ball, the hand will blur a little bit. It did at 1 to 1 25th of a second. It would go even further if we dropped it even, even lower. But keep in mind, if you wanna get something a little more blurry, some motion to add some emotion to the image, just drop your ISO. So if you drop it from 1600 to 400, know that that's two stops. And then if you want the same exact exposure that's been working the whole time, you need to just drop your shutter speed two stops, and then everything else is gonna be exactly the same. So I'm gonna even go down to one one hundredth of a second here, and I'm gonna lock in and focus on this. Oh yeah, and it's in the hands. Okay, I'm zooming in, which means that the, hold that, just, hold, I keep doing that, keep doing that. Um, I'm zooming in, which means that 
I'm losing, I'm gonna lose more light. I just wanna get the, I'm gonna zoom in tight on the hands here. Now I don't know if I like, I don't like a lot of motion in shots, but this actually may have worked. So it's just a matter, you know, on these shoots, it's just a matter of playing around. Not playing around, but thinking, how could the images turn out? You see them in your mind, then you have to think to yourself, how do I get the settings right to get the shot that we're trying to get? I see it in my head, now I need to figure out how to get those settings right, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. And then I get it right, and then I try some other things. Because Joe has been in this area, this is where he's living right now. I'm getting tight shots, I'm getting motion shots, um, and we're not focused on the video angle of this, but we will do a quick interview at the end with the D5500 to get some video. But if I was, I say this all the time as a, as a quick tip, is you're either shooting video or you're shooting photos. You're not trying to do both at the same time because if you try to do both at the same time, you're gonna miss everything that you should have been capturing. Hey Joe. Yeah. So what's the thinking behind no phone number? Uh, that was not a, a, an intentional thing. Uh, I actually bought a phone, it's in the basement. Um, I got an old, you know, push button phone off of Etsy, uh, an old, uh, anyway, uh, the, the thinking is, um, I was just gonna wait to make sure, like I wanted to have everything like just just right before we open and I didn't want to I didn't want to I, I wanted to make sure everything was running smoothly before we had like sort of a phone up and running and in the first few days of being open it was so busy in here that there were, it was just like if we have a phone in here it's gonna just be crazy so then we just never had a phone I don't know that's 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 cool. So the, the the well, go ahead. No, no, it just wasn't it wasn't something that I was like, oh, we're not gonna have a phone. Yeah, that was it. Just happened, that and it works. And it worked. Because I'll tell people how this works when you come to get pizza. Now I live down the street, which is oh, so if you come here, don't come looking for my house. But I do live down the street, and I know that Joe opens at 5:30 from Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and. There's sometimes a line, especially in the, in, when it's really nice out, there's a line forming at the door at 5.30. Because what happens is you have to come in and kind of get your time. You walk in, the first pizza is gonna be out how many minutes after 5.30? 15 About 15 minutes. And so then, then it's, then it's 5.35 and 5.40. You can also, I walk in and say, hey, I'd like one at seven. So they put my name down for seven and then I basically go home and then I come back at seven. There's also bars around here so you could go get drinks, but this is definitely good. So something I wanna pick up on, when, when Joe was talking, I came around this side because I had the idea that I wanted to start to shoot a little tighter to try and blow out the background because a lot of people say you can't blow out the background with a kit lens. Well, you absolutely can when you zoom out. The, the, the idea behind that is at 18, it's much harder to, to blow out the background unless you get super close to a subject. In this case, at 140 and at 5.6, the back wall's pretty far away. I'm able to blow out the back wall and focus in on Joe. But the other thing I did is I went from that, remember we were at 400 ISO, I bumped it back up to 2000 because I, I knew that I was gonna zoom in and get that 5.6. So when he started to work in front of the window, I was like, ah, oh, my exposure is wrong. So I just rode the shutter speed like I said. But because he was talking about the phone, he also cracked an authentic smile. So talking to your, to your subjects, whoever you're shooting, can bring out emotion that they may not have had unless you were asking questions like I was doing. That shot where he was talking about the phone and how it's a funny story got me this really, really nice shot that's up on the screen right now. Look at that, it's a great smile. And as part of a photo story, I like having the tight headshot. We've got the ultra wide, so you can see everything that's going on to go, with, oh, what, what? No, I just like that. You like the, you like the sound of that? Oh, but look, today when you say like great smile a couple of times, it's kind of embarrassing, but it's funny. Excuse me as I interrupt my own story to go take more pictures because he was smiling again. Oh my God, on this one, he's looking, he's like, hello, dough ball. You're my little pretty dough ball. He's like, you're, you're so cute when I squeeze you like this and you rub the flower all over the belly. It's so cute. That's exactly what I got out of that photo. But see, it, it takes time. You walk into these shots. Things just happen as you interact. Uh, you know, I, I love shooting. 
There's nothing more than I love coming out here, interviewing, asking questions, and then shooting. So a lot of what's going on is, is figuring out the situations, figuring out um, what kind of shots I can get, and one thing leads to another that leads to another, just more ideas, and then we keep going from there. So I just, I just yeah, well, there we go. So I hope you're enjoying this video. Do you like what I am shooting here in the pizza place? Are you trying to say, how did I figure all this stuff out? How did I get out of auto? How does my brain really work to figure out all of my settings? Well, if you aren't sure what to do, you can check out the Fronos Photo Guide to Getting Out of Auto. It's a three hour guide that's going to show you exactly how the exposure triangle works, how you can take control of your camera, how you can start getting the images that I'm getting here, and how you can just feel better as a photographer to get out of auto and to take control of your camera. So go ahead and click up on the screen right now. It's gonna take you over to a free preview so you can see what is inside and how it's going to help you. So now let's get back to the five minute portrait. All right guys, this camera has Wi-Fi. I've brought a monopod. I'm gonna try to do something different here. I've never tried it before. So I gotta set up Wi-Fi in the camera and I already have the app on my phone. So I've gotta find out where Wi-Fi is inside here. Shooting menu maybe? No? Ah, settings. Here we go. Info, Wi-Fi. Touch Wi-Fi. Right now it's off, I'm gonna enable it. So now it's gonna search, I believe, for my phone. So it's on, yep, it's waiting. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if it will pick up the camera. There it is, Nikon WU2. Nope, oh, yep, it automatically, it automatically connected. Sweet, so it's finding it right now. It's talking to each other. Something you're gonna have to keep in mind is this is probably gonna chew up more battery. So then I go over to the Nikon app right here, the Nikon View app. Oh my God, I think it's gonna work. And it just, I went on live view here, and now look, you can see wirelessly right here. So my idea is to try to get an overhead shot of Joe working. Now, you can have the, phone, uh, the, the files transfer to the phone, but it's only gonna shoot JPEG. It's not gonna shoot the RAW. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna try to hold this up over my head when Joe is here, and then I'm gonna try to focus it where I want it, and then hit the shutter button. Can I go vertical? I mean, can I hard, go hard? No, actually, that's gonna be harder to work. Actually, it would have done it, but why are you, fo okay, it keeps focusing every time it turns on. All right, so now I, also, I'm at 18 millimeters on this, because I wanna get wide, the widest, and because I'm at 18 millimeters, why don't I change Oh, can I change my ISO without changing this? Uh, I don't think so. So what I'm gonna do is bump my shutter speed up, which it's not, le uh, it's not letting me do. Huh, so that's something interesting that we're discovering here. I guess you can't change the settings. So I'm gonna turn that off, come back into here, get my info screen back on, and let's drop from 2000 ISO back to 1250 and I think 400th of a second, roughly, let's actually what I can do is a test while Joe's not here, let's do a test and see how this works. Plus it's, oh, oh, oh my God, you gotta be totally strong to do this. Oh, oh geez, oh my God, ah, strain, strain, almost strain, I think I pulled my, my index finger right there. Um, so I'm gonna preview it on the back of the camera because it's much easier. So one thing that I just thought of is I've got VR on in the lens. I'm holding this with one arm. I'm probably gonna shake a little bit because the shutter, what happens is the mirror's flipped up. It's gotta flip down and then flip back up to shoot the picture so that the, the shutter can move. This is an interesting thing. So I want a faster shutter speed to counteract any movement. So I'm gonna get out of this real quick. So I'm gonna bump, I'm going to bump my, um, ISO back up so I can speed up the shutter speed. I'm actually gonna go to, let's go to 2500 and then I should go to about a thousandth of a second and that should give me the same exposure but counteract movement. Okay, so Joe's mixing something else in the mixing bowl and I thought that this setup looked good. I don't have a, a, a ladder or anything and I've got this set up and I've gone to my one one thousandth of a second at f3.5 
and I'm gonna try and get this straight. The funny thing was, I'm rotating my camera hoping that this can get straight because I still wanna get my angle straight. I'm also resting the tri monopod on my arm. Up. Oh. 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 I don't know why it's downloading files. I don't want it to download files. Ah, download after shoot, no. Good, turning that off. So that's an option you turn off because I don't want it to download. I want to be able to shoot quicker. I got to be able to get this straight and I, got, I want to get my lines right. Okay. Oh. See, this is where it would, it would be helpful to have somebody or some kind of remote on my tongue that if I got it, I'd be like, shoot, activate, action camera, take picture. Because this is pretty heavy out on this. I just gotta find the right stability point. Maybe it's holding it with the other arm. No, it's not, because I'm left-handed. Or just be less high. Okay, I gotta rotate this way. It's so hard to get your line straight. I'm gonna try one more from up top, which means I'm gonna, I'm gonna extend the pole even more. Could I make the what, the camera lighter? <laughs> well, this is one of the lightest, this is actually the D5500 is the lightest camera that Nikon has made. See, this would be much easier. If I had something to rest it on right here, maybe I could make this work. Here we go. No, I want it higher. So I'm gonna extend the pole even further. Huh. So I'm trying to find the stability point, which is, which is actually now gonna rest between my legs probably. That will make it more stable. Oh yeah. No, actually I want it up a little higher. Oh, good thing I'm wearing tight pants. Oh, here we go. Oh my God, that's so much better. Oh, I actually like that. I'm gonna put it into my belt loop. Pretty cool. Oh, Joe, you're standing there. Now I need to get a portrait of you standing right there. Possibly. All right, let me do one more thing here. This does take some work. I wanna put the, I wanna tilt this even further down. Maybe that will make it easier. We'll see. This is the last thing, then we're gonna move on, but this is a good test that I wanted to partake in. Am I not, am I messing with your chi, Joe? No, no, no. Okay, oh, that worked, that worked. All right, this is, here we go. Oh, I got one dough ball in there, that's pretty cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good call, Joe. Oh God, here we go, guys. Oh, right there. I just have to rotate this properly. Oh, hold that, hold that, right, yeah. This is pretty cool. Never in the history of photography, well, yes, you could have done this on a pole before, but you couldn't really preview it. Now, can I get you to stand right in the middle under the pole? I'm just gonna try and get your hands. There you go, hold that. Sorry, I don't wanna hit you in the head. Go ahead, do your thing. Okay. Now I'm gonna make sure that I did all this right. Hopefully the, the screen, hopefully the screen looks the same as huh, the preview. Hopefully the preview is a good live preview. So let's, uh, I'm gonna turn off this app part to get out of that. And I'm gonna go ahead and check these out with Joe. How, how are we looking, look. Yeah, that's cool. 
Whew. The only way wide. I... Yeah, that's the 18 millimeters. See, that's yeah. pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. I want my lines to be a little straighter, but they're actually pretty good. But you can adjust that. that too, right? I can, but I don't like to. I like to get it right. I like to get that stuff straight in the camera. Uh, okay. But that's just me. That, that's a personal preference. Right, right. Whew. So guys, that's a quick testing out of the Wi-Fi. I had to, last night, I had to think, pre-visualize, how can I use this Wi-Fi to actually get pictures? I've never done that before. Now I've done uh, with my D4S where I've plugged it in and put it up top, but that never holding something like this with a monopod, so I had to prepare, bring the monopod, remember to shoot with the Wi-Fi, have the Wi-Fi set up and tested before I came here, and now then we played with it. We, we you know, they're only gonna be JPEGs, unfortunately. I wish that it would just do the raw files, but I don't know why they don't. Hopefully the exposure was good enough that it's gonna work and I can still tweak them. But yes, those files when you're shooting Wi-Fi are JPEG. Quick tip, make sure you turn off the transfer to your phone because you can have it downloaded to your phone, but that just slows down your shooting. You can also tell it to, I believe, download after the shoot is over, but just turn that off altogether. All right, that Wi-Fi thing was pretty darn cool and my shoulders are a little tight after doing that, but now I wanna just pretty much get out of Joe's way. I wanna get the portraits done, quick portraits, set up, and then we're done. Then I'll wrap up the camera, so. Joe, I'm gonna do, ask you to do some portraits. Okay. Um, I liked how you had, I like arms, arms folded. I just, I like the feel of that against near your pizza oven like you were before. That gives me a chance to, it shows your place, it, and it shows that it's yours, you know? Uh, let me, uh... Go ahead, finish those up. I just wanna get these out of the way, they'll yeah. sort of dry out if I don't. Don't let them dry out. Um, I'll just prepare as you do your thing. Oh, I, oh! One thing is, uh, I didn't change my shutter speed back from one one thousandth of a second, and I just noticed it. So if I took this picture, it probably would be extra dark, and I'm wrong because it's right. I, but it's something I noticed. Uh, so it's still my settings are right. 2500th of a sec, uh, 2500 ISO. Oh, but he's gonna be backing away from the light too. Actually, I like where it's at. Let's actually make the change. Change the ISO, 1600. 1600 from 2500 is under a stop. So I can go to 640th of a second and I should be good. Yeah, that's good. So I know that he's gonna put the ball down in a second, so I just switch to wider to get that happening when that does happen. Boom. Whew. Another thing with a camera like this is having no vertical shutter release is a little more difficult because you have to turn your hand over like this. Generally speaking, I like to turn the hand over like this, not under like this. This seems to be awkward. It just seems to be more natural to go like this, put your hand here, wrap your finger around, and be good to go. All right, so Joe's gonna be coming back into the darker area, so I'm gonna quickly bump my ISO up. Let's just do this for fun. Let's go to 6400, and let's try to play. Ah, oh, let's play in this court. Let me just double check. Ah, yeah. See, I utilize the screen as, you know, what they call chimping. It's okay to chimp, because I'm checking my exposure that way. <laughs> chimping. Yeah, well, that's what they call it. That sounds like some weird sexual thing. <laughs> hey, you never know. I chimp, I chimped her. <laughs> or is that shrimping? What does that mean? I don't even know. Oh, so I'm over the shoulder. It's when you're over the shoulder like this. This is not easy. This is tight, but this is, this is pretty good. Let me go here, let me get the vertical of him doing this. So in this case, I'm not worrying about the fire extinguisher because that's, that's part of the wall. Right there, right there, right there. Hey, why don't you look at me from the right there, nice and relaxed. Boom. 
Boom signifies the shot's good. Yeah, oh yeah. Look right here. Hold it, hold it. Three, two, good. The reason I said three, two is I wanted to, to, to fake him out because he blinked on the last two. Usually I wouldn't say that the subject blinked to them because then they become self-conscious, but being that it's for educational purposes, I say, all right, one, two, one, two, so that they don't know when I'm gonna shoot so that they kind of pay attention more. It's just a little, a little trick that I've uh, picked up. Lower angle, make Joe look, oh, that's nice. All right, look right here, the same, there you go. All right, try to get my angle straight. Oh, that's good, that's really good, I love this. Joe's got his finger on the knob. You're gonna hit, you're gonna press stop at some point? Yeah. So I'm dropping my shutter speed again. All right, cause that's, oh, they needed to go more. Quickly gonna change my ISO, go 12,800. Tell me when you're doing that. Stop. Yep. Boom. So I quickly doubled my, uh, <laughs> what I had to do there is I took one picture and I quickly saw, see, this is where the viewfinders in something like a Sony come into play. When you have a hybrid viewfinder that you can see the actual exposure on a OLED display inside the camera without having the chimp at that point, see, that's gonna be something good to have because I caught this photo here and so it's like, oh, that's too dark. So instantly, I couldn't drop my shutter speed too far. Uh, so let me take that back one second and explain because I'm jumping around here in my head. I was zoomed out to almost 140, which means I was at 5.6. The picture was too dark. I was at like 200th of a second. I didn't want to drop the shutter speed much lower because then I have a chance of getting some motion blur even though I have the VR. So what I did is I quickly touched the screen, bumped up the ISO to where I wanted it, and then took the picture and it was much better. Are right, you gonna be pulling, the oh, okay, okay. Quickly, let me do that again. Go back down to six, this. 200 should be about right. This is good, this is good. Okay, now it's a little bright, so I'm just gonna bump my shutter speed up a few ticks to 320th. There you go. Well, that's good. I like that look that you just gave and you spit. There you go. You can, can you look past me? I know you need to keep watching what you're doing. Oh, I'm distracting. There you go. It's almost like I'm not even here. He's not even here. See, to me, the key is looking for the eyes. Yeah, that's what I wanted him to do. I was looking for the eyes and then it's hard to tell sharpness on here. I certainly hope it is. It looks pretty good. Oh, oh, hey now. I need to stop talking and focus on stuff. Filling the frame. Oh, there you go. Hey now. That's good. I got those crushed. I'm going to get under the stove. I just hope that I don't catch my hair on fire. Oh. The things we do for photos. Oh my God, I can see the fire burning. Oh, this is a good angle, but I gotta check my light. Oh, it's not bad. Oh, actually, look. Hold on, Joe. I, I, I'm in my Sebastian McCall's. They're actually not getting dirty because this is one of the cleanest floors I've ever seen. So I was on my back. I know, not a good place to be for taking photos. It's not as stable as this. This is a much, I can get my angles much straighter sitting or kneeling than laying on my back. It's like awkward. Oh, sorry, you're good, Joe. I just have to back that thing up more just so I can, uh, it's hard to focus here, but there we go. I try talking and shooting at the same time. See, I'm using the composition, framing, making sure I don't cut off the f I need to stop talking when I'm shooting. I need to focus on shooting. So you people understand out there that I'm focused on shooting. It's 
So one thing I noticed as I'm talking again. Oh, that's good, Joe, that's good. Now can you look at me like, what are you doing under my thing? Oh, hey, hey can you do that again, do that again. Put your hand on the thing. Okay, push it in, but I'm, I'm doing this. You're looking down at it. Good, good, thank you. Whew. I'm coming out, guys. I'm coming out from under the oven. Oh, I hope that didn't sound terrible. <laughs> okay, whew, yeah. <sighs> you ever see the people that try to like lean back and get those photos or lay down in a certain way that's awkward? Don't do that. Try to find the most stable position to, to get your eye up in the viewfinder to see and shoot. Can we grab a few quick portraits? Yeah. I actually, I'll do some like like there. I like the way that your hand is on that. And I'm, I'm, just, I'm just paying attention to the background. Now, I've got to change my ISO because I was focused uh, for underneath the table. So I'm going to go to one that, go into 12, uh, 1250 ISO. OK. Cross your arms. Now, actually, that's good. That's perfect. That's perfect. So what I like about this is that it's really warm right here. Oh, beautiful light. I have to contend with the exit sign up there, so it's a matter of me just rotating my body a little bit. I love that the sign, sorry to make you wait. I'm teaching, I'm teaching. That I love that the sign's in the background for the pizzas that you can order. And is oh, this is good. I'm moving just a little bit more. Making sure I don't cut off his hands. Go a little bit wider. Then I'm gonna go a little tighter. Is this okay, Joe? Yeah. Oh, I actually like this a lot. Not that I'm surprised, but I love the I love the way that this looks. So I need to just get your head to turn a little bit. Turn your body, bring that, that left foot forward. I like how you're leaning in. My whole point here is I'm trying to get more light into your face from there. There you go. That lean in, lean in like you, I, I'll, I'll give you an example. You see how this looks? It's pretty cool, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna compensate for this myself. There we go, let's do that again, there you go. Move that way, perfect. This time the arms crossed is gonna work because I'm gonna come in tighter. So just however you would rest your arms normally. Is that how you, how do you normally, would you do it? Would you ever cross your arms, fold your arms? Yeah. Yeah, fold your arms. It seems like sort of Pretentious? Well, no, it just seems sort of Not your normal? What? This thing. The, then be you. Do you. No, 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 I'm saying that's what I would sort of do. Something like that or whatever. Alright. Can you rest that hand closer to you? No, that, that's on the hips fine. There you go, because I was cutting it off and I didn't want to cut it off. Should be good. All right, so I think we've got just about everything that we need for this real world review. Um, so it, it's kind of twofold. It was a real world review and a five minute portrait. We broke out the D5500 as you've seen the whole time, and it's the first time I've ever used it. Now, any photographer should be able to pick up just about any camera and lens combination, and the fundamentals still will apply. It's a little more difficult using a 18 to 140, but I can definitely make it happen. Now I can't comment on the quality of the pictures just yet because I have to do that in the computer later. But I don't care what camera you put in my hands and I don't care what lens you put in my hands. I'm still gonna revert back to the basics and fundamental understandings of how the exposure triangle works to try and capture these images to make them the way that I want them. The camera feels perfectly fine in the hands. It's very responsive. The, there's 39 focusing points, which is a ton in a camera like this. Something I didn't like was the small viewfinder. Very hard for my eye to get up in there to see what I needed to see. Um, the touchscreen, really like the touchscreen because it's much quicker than going through the menu system 
system with the joystick, the up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, select, start button. I don't like using that so much. I would like to see a 3.2 inch touchscreen on a professional high-end camera. I think it's perfectly fine. It doesn't need to rotate, but all I did is just touch what I needed to touch. I don't care that they don't have GPS in here. I think the Wi-Fi is more usable than GPS. You saw what we did with it. That was a pretty cool thing to hold it above his head and hold it above the board as he worked. I couldn't get that unless I was like Minute Bull in 7'7". Seven seven. I wouldn't be able to do that. So all in all, I lived in manual, like I said, with this camera. I did the tight shots, I did the wide shots, I did the detailed shots, I got on the floor underneath the oven, I did what I needed to do to get the pictures. And like I say, it's a little different when I'm out here on these photo shoots because I get into a shooting zone, but I get into the teaching zone. So I have to do multiple things here and try to focus on what we were doing. So, all in all, very happy with this. Joe, thank you very much for doing this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is great. You gotta come out to Pizzeria Bedia. A lot of people call it Badia, but it's Bedia. Call it whatever you want, but it's really good pizza. But make sure you get here early so that you can put your name in and get the pizza that you really, really want. So that is where we're gonna wrap it up. You can see all the full res images. You can download them on the website uh, to test them out yourself to see what you think and whether this camera is one for you. So from Pizzeria Badia, Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. So I hope you like that five minute portrait and real world review that we just did. But if you wanna see more information on the Nikon D5500, I've put up a playlist right here that you can click where you're going to be able to find a full review when that's ready, as well as a setup guide for how to set up your D5500. And if you haven't subscribed here on YouTube, go ahead and click this button right here to subscribe so you can be notified when videos go live.